Shots fired by police. I got him down. The FBI, including their behavioral analysis unit, has been studying what happened in Allen on May 6, 2023 to help change the outcome for the next possible mass shooting. Part of our mission is to do what's called a post-attack analysis, which is really understanding the why behind the attack, unpacking the motive of the offender. I'm passing the injury. The final report on Allen is due out late this summer, and it will lay out a timeline, working backwards to a possible motive. You got him? Dr. Carrie Gibson's behavioral analysis unit in Quantico, Virginia, helped with that report. We know that these offenders don't snap. We know that they consider, plan, and prepare. It starts with a grievance, which is a, you know, a humiliation, a slight, a perceived wrong, an injustice. It can be real or perceived for that person. Part of what they looked at happened 15 years ago when the gunman was kicked out of the Army before he finished basic training. WFAA obtained some of his military records, but weren't able to access his psychological profile, which the Army withheld, citing the dead man's privacy rights. The documents show in 2008, his commanding officer recommended that he be separated from the Army prior to the expiration of his current term of service. According to the records, he was sent to an Army psychiatrist for a mental status evaluation. The result, he was diagnosed with adjustment disorder with disturbance of conduct. The doctor diagnosed that this soldier lacks the ability to continue in the Army and to pursue further therapy, and this soldier will have no access to weapons. That is a safety precaution part of the military. We showed the shooter's Army paperwork to military lawyer Patrick McLean. If you are diagnosed with a mental health condition in the United States military, more likely than not, you will be instructed uh, not to handle firearms. But the Allen shooter wasn't court-martialed or deemed incompetent by a judge. Both would have restricted his access to guns outside the military. His discharge meant he was free to buy guns even though he was dismissed from the Army. No further alerts were needed for law enforcement or the FBI. For the most part, they are going to be dealing with the, the individual members through their channels and, and their resources, and then they will start to coordinate with us if there is going to be a handoff in the sense mm -hmm. of them being separated. He often wrote about suicide and violence. We know that there's a thin line between suicidality and homicidality. And so for us, we say all the time, suicide prevention is homicide prevention. The FBI says it is crucial for family members to intervene when they see someone experiencing a break with reality or actively talking about harming themselves and others. You were 16 times more likely to be an active shooter if you were displaying concerning behaviors to bystanders and they did nothing about it. Two weeks before the shooting, he wrote that someone told him he looked like the type to walk into a crowd and start shooting, but apparently did nothing to intervene. We know that when they do that, a lot of times the act of violence can happen within seven days of obtaining that weapon. The FBI says their goal is not to reason with or excuse the behavior of the shooter, but to use the information to stop other shootings and educate the public about speaking up when they see something. We know there's a tool that works to effect change. In the last year, the FBI has received 360 leads where they have been able to intervene. We're very hopeful here because every day we see change happen and we see lives saved every day. In Dallas, I'm Rebecca Lopez.